Hey guys, I'm Jonas. Today we're going to be getting started on our new build series, and this is on a 2007 Yamaha Drive gas-powered cart. Now this cart has definitely seen its better days. It's been used and abused and ran hard since 2007, and is definitely ready for some upgrades. Now we're fortunate enough to have a couple of different sponsors jump on board for this build series, so we're going to be going over those throughout this whole series and the different parts that they've supplied for us. But to get started, the first thing that we need to do is get the body removed from this cart and really get this thing stripped down and cleaned up and ready to start going back together with our new parts. If you guys want to follow along with this build series, be sure to subscribe and I'll leave a link in the description down below for the playlist of videos for this cart. To get started removing the body on this cart, the first thing that we need to do is remove the top and top supports on the original Drive 1s from 2007 up to 2016, you do have to remove the top or top supports to be able to remove the front or rear body section from the cart. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can go about removing the top depending on what you need to do to the cart. If you're not going to be changing out the top or painting it or doing anything to it, you can just remove the top with the top support still connected to it by just removing the two bolts from each corner on the front top supports and then there's two bolts on the back top supports as well on each side. So just remove those eight bolts and then if you have two people you can just grab onto each side on the top supports, pick the top up, set it off to the side. But on this particular build we are going to be replacing this top with a black top. So I'm going to just go ahead and unbolt the top from the top supports and remove the top by itself and then I'll come back and unbolt each top support and remove those individually. To remove these bolts from the top support, we're going to be using a 5mm Allen head and a 13mm wrench. To remove our front top supports, we just need to slide the rubber cover up out of the way, then use a 12mm socket to remove the two bolts. Now for our rear top supports, we first need to remove the two Allen head bolts on each side that hold on our drain tubes. These use a 4 millimeter Allen head. These drain tubes do have a zip tie down in the engine bay area that hold the bottom of the drain tube in place. You should be able to slide the drain tube up out of that zip tie without having to cut it. Just remember when you go to reinstall these drain tubes that they get slid back down inside of those zip ties. Now we can use a 12 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts on each side holding our rear top supports in place. Next, we're going to use a 10 millimeter wrench to remove the four bolts holding our seat back assembly in place. If you're not going to be replacing this seat back assembly or installing a rear seat kit, you do not have to remove the seat back assembly from the bag holder assembly. You can skip this step. Now we need to remove the two plastic push pins holding our rear access panel in place. Use a 12 millimeter socket to remove the four bolts from the bag holder assembly. Next, we need to remove the 11 plastic push pins holding our floor mat in place. To do that, I like to use this body clip removal tool. I'll leave a link for this in the description below. We also need to remove the one plastic push pin from the steering column cover. To remove the center cup holder assembly, we need to remove the Allen head screw using a 3 millimeter wrench. Now we can remove the four Allen head screws on the back of the dash. To remove the four plastic push pins across the top of the dash, you first need to push down on the center. Next, we need to unplug our wiring harness from the back of the ignition switch and the low oil light switch. 
Now you can remove the dash from the machine. Now we need to remove the five plastic push pins across the top of the front cow. To remove these, just press down on the center of the push pin until it pops out the bottom. If you're having problems with your plastic push pins being difficult to remove, try spraying them with a lubricant first. Now we have a screw on either side to remove using an eight millimeter socket. Now we just have one bolt left to remove that's located directly above the front bumper. Now to remove our side skirts, we need to remove the plastic push pin from the front and the back. Since the fuel tank is in the way on the passenger side, you will need to reach in from inside of the rear wheel well to get the plastic push pin. Then we have two screws in the middle that use an eight millimeter socket. Then pull out on the top of the side skirt and push down to disengage the three tabs along the bottom. Next, you're going to remove the one plastic push pin from the lower body section on each side then remove the two plastic push pins from underneath of the seat. To remove our choke lever, we just need to unscrew the plastic nut. To remove the forward and reverse lever, you need to use a flathead screwdriver to push down on the C-clip located on the back side of the forward reverse lever. Be ready to catch this clip as they do like to go flying. Then you can pull forward on the lever, rocking it back and forth to disengage it from the shaft. You're also going to want to remove the two seat mounting brackets. These use a 10 millimeter socket. The last thing we need to do is remove our bag well by just removing the plastic push pins and the two bolts using a 10 millimeter socket. Now you're ready to remove the rear body section. You're going to want to tilt the back of the body up in the air first to help slide the front off of your forward and reverse shaft. Now while you've got your cart stripped down like this, you've got a great opportunity to really go through this thing, get it cleaned up, and get a full service done on it. With the body off, you've got good access to the entire cart to be able to do your engine service, rear diff service, brakes, steering, all your linkages, cables, everything on this cart is really easy to get to. Now we're going to have quite a few videos coming out on how to do all the maintenance on these carts, especially while you've got them stripped down like this. So you guys be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you catch those notifications. Now we've got some big plans for this cart. We're gonna be installing a Mad Jack six inch A-arm style lift kit along with some 22 inch tall tires. Now installing that lift kit is gonna give us the room that we need to be able to install our new Predator 22 horse V-twin engine. So that's gonna be roughly double the amount of horsepower that this cart came with from the factory. To install that new engine, we're going to be using the brand new conversion kit from Vegas Carts that they just released for these G29 carts. We've also got a custom painted body along with a brand new set of seats, a painted top, new windshield, and a couple other goodies we're going to be installing along the way. Well, that's gonna wrap it up for today, guys. If you got some good value out of this video, please hit that thumbs up button. Consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.